But to be honest, during the colder months, I pretty much do turn into a hermit and never want to leave my house, but I'm okay with that. <sighs> it's cold as titties out here. <laughs> to my channel. My name is Lauren, if you are new here, and it is day three of Vlogmas. Woohoo! So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. But I ask my followers on Instagram several times a week now through Vlogmas which video they would like me to film for each of those days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I do more sit down videos. And today it was how to be a successful loner or a happy loner or being happy alone. So let's get into it. First of all, let me just say being a loner is just somebody who prefers to be alone or chooses to be alone. Also, I don't know if you can hear that, but they are vacuuming out in the hallway in my apartment complex. So I'm sorry if you can hear that. That is so annoying. Okay. So maybe you are a loner and you just need to hear me say good on you. Keep doing you. I'm proud of you. Accept and embrace that you are a loner because in my eyes, that's actually a really wonderful thing. Take care of you and be proud to be a loner. But what if you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? And you feel like you have to be a part of all things at all times. I will say most loners are introverts, although not all of them. So let me explain. Being an introvert does not exempt you from possibly experiencing FOMO. You can be a loner and have the fear of missing out. I for one am extremely introverted. Every personality quiz test I've ever taken says that I weigh very heavily on the side of introvert versus extrovert, but I've always known that. I get exhausted being around people and carrying conversation, even conversation that I thoroughly enjoy. So my alone time is extremely important to me. However, I often do suffer from FOMO. I always wonder if I'm missing out on like these pivotal moments, these great, amazing bonding times or funny moments or life-changing moments by keeping myself alone. So I've kind of found a way to have the best of both worlds. And like I said before, I want to note that you can also be an extrovert and be a happy loner. We'll get into it. I think it's healthy for everyone to know how to be happy on their own and kicking it alone sometimes. All right, people, being alone is not a negative Thing. Being alone is not something to avoid. In society, we see the positive of the skill of sociability, sociability, being social, but rarely do we hear compliments or praise of people who have the ability of being happy alone or just being alone in general. Also, I wanna say being a loner doesn't necessarily mean locking yourself away in your room for days and days at a time. I will say though, as an introvert, there are times that that is absolutely lovely. But when I'm ready to get back out there and be a loner in public, there are a few things that I can do to keep my loner self healthy and happy. Number one, make your space. I'm a loner and I live in a 400 square foot apartment with my husband and dog and things get cramped. So let me tell you, I have to make space. As a loner, I feel like I need to have a bubble for just me and my thoughts. And I'll admit a lot of the time that space, that bubble, is the bathtub. Adam doesn't really take baths, unless of course things are getting kinky, then in that case I don't really mind. And patchouli does not like baths altogether. So that is my space. And if you live with other people too, you might find that your closet is your space. I remember so many times in my childhood where I hid in the closet or sat in the sink of a locked bathroom just to have some time, some me time. I really didn't do anything while I was there. Just needed some alone time. And don't be ashamed to have to lock yourself away sometimes. To be a happy and healthy loner, you just have to do whatever to make it work. Number two, find your time. Get up early or go to bed a little later. Adam pretty much falls asleep at the same time every night. And especially if he's on the bed at all, he will 100% pass out. So sometimes I take advantage of that and I take the time to just be with me to watch YouTube videos, to take that bath I was talking about. And he works four days a week, so when he's gone and I'm alone, then that's some good me time too. I adore my husband and I love every minute with him, but I don't think I would enjoy every minute with him if I didn't have a few minutes alone without him. Does that make sense? Make the time. Number three, go out alone, girlfriend. I will admit Adam is actually really good at this. He and I are actually both loners and he utilizes the days I'm working or I'm busy to take himself out on a movie date. Our whole relationship, I've always known that he loves doing this. It fills up his movie going and his loner bucket. He likes to feel independent and so do I. I love encouraging him to embrace that side of himself because one, 
I understand the feeling. Two, he always comes back feeling really refreshed and like himself again. In the springtime, I often take myself out and go cruising and get myself some chocolate and enjoy the sunshine, the springtime, maybe find a farmer's market to walk around. I love that alone time. But to be honest, during the colder months, I pretty much do turn into a hermit and never want to leave my house, but I'm okay with that. <sighs> it's cold as titties out here. This hibernating bear does come out in the springtime. Number four, coffee shops are your best friend and you don't have to like coffee to like coffee shops, right? Am I right? I mean, there's tea, there's water, there's so many other things but coffee shops are your friend. And there is no denying that Adam and I love coffee. We love making it, smelling it, drinking it, discovering it, and trying different coffee shops. This was something we very much bonded over on tour. Although I am very introverted, I do love being around the energy of people around me from time to time. Bring your book, headphones, or just enjoy a cup of joe while doing nothing and talking to no one. Oh, it's the simple things. Number five, don't stop exploring. Like I said before, being a loner does not mean you wanna stay in your room indoors at all times. Just because you don't wanna be with anyone specific doesn't mean you can't be out there in the world. Creating time for yourself can mean anywhere at any time. Well, I hope this was helpful to all you loners out there and all of you who want to embrace more of that side of yourself. If you liked this video, give it a big ol' thumbs up. Comment down below how you enjoy your alone time. Hit that big red subscribe button and join this crazy fam. As always, I love you guys to the moon and back. And until next time, bye.